Hi, I'm Karen Robson, Sociologist and Ontario Research Chair in Educational Attainment and At-Risk Youth at McMaster University. My flagship project is entitled the Gateway Cities Project, where I work with researchers in five cities around the world. The team is located in Vancouver, Chicago, Toronto, New York City, and London, England. We examine the transition to college and university in these five major cities. I work in a strong partnership with the Toronto District School Board to link data to policy discussions around equity. Our findings for this multi-year study have consistently revealed that the pathways of certain racialized groups, particularly Blacks, were less likely to be characterized by going to university. Even when we compared Toronto youth to those in other cities, we found that Black youth in Toronto had a particularly difficult time. Our findings corroborated the work of other researchers working with Toronto public school data. Black youth had different and worse educational experiences compared not only to their white counterparts, but other racialized youth. This invariably led people to ask, is it like this in other parts of Canada? Or is this a Toronto problem? The issue is that we can't know. Bureaucratic hurdles are impediments to a strong evidence-based policy in education in this country. This has become more and more apparent to me over the last few years and has caused me to bring a more public voice to these concerns. Why don't we have data in other cities? And why is race so seldom collected in education institutions? There is clear evidence that race matters, but why don't we collect the evidence so that we can push for better policy to help those that need it the most? An additional major concern of mine is that institutional research ethics boards have had a growing reach over the past decade or so, even in incredibly low-risk research. This has strongly served to de-incentivize individual researchers from wanting to collect data. Where national official data do exist, access to it is highly restricted. The tone has been set from the application procedure that even includes fingerprinting potential researchers. As a leader in my field, it is my duty to draw attention to these practices that actively set up barriers to research and to change them. Evidence-based education research needs widespread adoption of linking school records to post-secondary records. These records already exist and are linkable. It is theoretically very easy to overcome this dearth of data at very little cost. However, bureaucratic impediments to this possibility make this process almost impossible. In the unique instances where we can link these data, there have been demonstrations of the various post-secondary trajectories that our youth take, and these are not always linear. Training our future generations of researchers not only requires that we give them the necessary tool set to answer questions, but also a research environment that fosters the creation of cutting-edge social research. By combining data linked at the secondary and post-secondary levels, we can produce evidence-based policy. By using creative approaches, we can effectively communicate these ideas to policymakers and other stakeholders and contribute to a more rigorous understanding of the educational pathways of Canadian youth.